In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to produce some nice looking rarefied species accumulation curves in Anne Chow's iNext R package but we're going to use iNext online because it makes it very accessible and easy to use. I'm going to give a very brief recap on what rarefaction actually is before I start with the tutorial so if you're comfortable with that you can skip straight to the tutorial on how to use iNext online and, and produce these graphs. When we're measuring species richness, the number of species at a site, we sometimes want to know if our sample's complete, if we have all the species, or at least all the relatively common ones. Or we might want to compare species richness from different sites, but correct for any bias in the number of species due to unequal sample sizes, uh, like we have in this data set here. And we can do that by rarefaction. Now, one way to rarefy a sample is to apply a formula, uh, this one, to adjust all your larger sample sizes to give you the number of species you would have expected in a sample had it been the same size as the smallest one. So we can adjust these larger samples of 127 individuals or 106 individuals down to a sample size of 28 and then compare those three sites. But there are other ways to rarefy a sample. Uh, we can do something called bootstrapping. And what we do in bootstrapping is to subsample. We randomly select a smaller number of samples from a larger sample, and then look at the number of species in that subsample. And if we do that once, we get one bootstrap estimate for species richness at a smaller sample size. But obviously there's an, an element of chance there, and to get a good estimate, we need to repeat that subsampling many times. And in fact, to get a good estimate, it may be that we need to do that 10,000 times. So we have to actually use a computer to do this. And then when we have those 10,000 richness values, we can average those and use that as a rarefied estimate of species richness for the smaller sample size. But rarefaction by bootstrapping is actually more powerful than adjusting down your sample size. If we do a bootstrap estimate for every subsample size below that actual sample size and graph the rarefied estimate for the number of species in the sample versus the sample size, we get a rarefaction curve. Rarefaction curves usually have a steep portion before a plateau as the subsample size approaches the larger sample size. Sample sizes in this region before the curve plateaus are probably incomplete, but samples in this region above the plateau are probably complete and can reasonably be compared. Clearly the number of calculations required for these curves means that they can only be practically done by a computer program. And there are several available. Many run in the statistical software R and one of these is the iNext package. And the authors of iNext, the brilliant Anne Chow and her research group, have created an online version of iNext that makes it really accessible and produces very attractive graphs. This is iNext Online. There are comprehensive um, introductions and user guides and published papers on this, but I'm gonna get you up and running with the basics in this tutorial. So we enter our data in this panel on the left. They do have some demo data there, and we can upload data, but for the purposes of the tutorial, it's easier to key in the data and show you how it works and you can actually cut and paste into here as well so we'll do that first of all we need to select the data type we can have abundance data or incidence data in abundance data we have a data label followed by the abundance of each species separated by spaces for incidence data uh, we have whether the species occur or not in a particular sample unit so we have a data label the first number is the number of sample units and after that each number represents a species and we have the number of sample units that that species is recorded in. And so this might be suitable for something like camera trapping uh, where we don't have abundance data and we'd have sample units of camera days perhaps. Uh, the first number would be our number of camera days and after that the number of camera days that each species appears in. So the first species appeared in 99 out of 150 camera days, for example. But we're going to work with abundance data. Uh, we're going to remove the demo data and we can key in our example of, of frogs in wetlands. 
So first of all, we put a site label in, separated by a space, we have the abundance of our frog species, just the number of individuals. After one data set, I can hit enter and enter data for the next site. I don't want any spaces in my site names. There we go. And before I select my data sets and draw the curves, I'm going to look at these general settings down here. The first one's very important. Um, this is set by default to Q0, and that's going to give us species richness. But if we wanted to, we could put the Shannon Wiener index in at Q equals 1, or the Simpson index at Q equals 2. But species richness is what we want at the moment. Uh, the next option is to specify the endpoint and number of knots, or to specify the sample sizes. With the sample sizes, we could work to a specific sample size that we want to look at, but the default is, is set to endpoint and number of knots. The endpoint will tell you how far the curve is going to go, the number of individuals, and the number of knots is the number of points in the curve. So the, the more knots you have, the smoother your curve is. The number of bootstraps is set by default to 50. And there's a little note here saying to save time, you can reduce the number of bootstraps. But um, I find that it doesn't take that much time to draw the curves and 50 is fine. Certainly for the exercises we do in the Wildlife Ecology and Conservation Science program at the University of Suffolk, you can leave these as the defaults. Uh, we can also set the confidence interval that is drawn on our curves. It's set by default to the fairly standard 0.95, so we can leave that as it is as well. Um, I'm going to leave the endpoint setting at zero for our example to start with, just to show you um, how that affects things. And we're going to select the data sets to draw. We could just select site one and draw a single curve for that, or we can select by holding shift down, uh, we can select all of those data sets and produce three curves on the same axes. And when we're happy with that, we just hit run. We get some basic summary data to start with. Uh, the first two columns are the important ones, but we, we kind of know this already. We have the, the number of individuals in our samples for each site and the number of species observed at each site. By clicking on the figure plots, it takes us to the graphs. And you can see we have species diversity up the y-axis and the number of individuals along the x-axis. And the way we interpret these is when it levels off, we think we have a complete sample. The second curve down is a, another way of reading this. Uh, so when you have a complete sample, it should reach one. So these samples are looking fairly complete. But we see there's something missing from our graph because I left the, the endpoint setting at zero and it set it automatic for me. It set it to 56. And that means um, not all of the data from our sample appears on the graph. So if I want um, the points to appear at the end of our, our data, I'm going to need to have a larger endpoint setting. Now I know that my, my sample size was 129 for the largest sample, so I'm going to set that endpoint setting to 130. And I'm going to redraw the graph. I'm going to have a point at my sample size for each site. The dotted line afterwards is an extrapolation. It extrapolates the data. And you can see that the, what, with that setting, you can see that the curve isn't that smooth. So I might decide that I want to increase the number of knots as well, just to make sure those, those curves are nice and smooth. And hit run again. And if I'm happy with that as my curve, I can export it as a PNG file. If I was going to use incidence data, and I'm just going to use the demonstration data here and select all of those sites. The thing to note here is that they have the number of sampling units along the bottom. They don't know what your sampling units are. So when you export your graph, you probably want to change that label 
to what your sampling units actually are, whether that's camera days or point samples or whatever. Don't forget you'll also want to explain what your dotted lines and your shaded areas are in your figure legend. Those 95% confidence intervals and the extrapolated lines after the sample sizes. Now that you've seen these figures you'll probably recognize them here and there in scientific journals and you'll know they're produced in iNext whether it's online or with the iNext R package.